Hey, buddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome back to Let's Play Old World. We're in the middle of a few things. We've got one, two new military units on the way, a slinger and a third warrior, in fact. I've got a couple of workers coming out. I've got my second worker in Ostia. And I think the big thing here now is to start building up a pretty good series of quarries in here. Um, this is lush terrain. Uh, so that might open up options for maybe doing some kind of granary and farm stuff out here in the boonies. Uh, I could maybe put a granary like on this tile and a couple of farms here. Um, but I think I would really, really like to actually be able to... I'd like to be able to get some quarries down here because stone stone is definitely a hard resource to get a lot of. If I look here, you can see you only get five from this. But if you see, it says from adjacent mountain, you get 40% increase. So if I can place a quarry here, it has two adjacent mountain tiles. So that'll be an 80% increase, which I believe means I would get nine stone per quarry, which is good. And you want your baseline resources to be pretty high. Let's see. Farms are better if they're on a river and the granary would help with growth. Let's see, do I go for quarries now? Yeah, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop a farm down on this tile. I'll probably put a granary here, some farms along the river, and then another granary here. Try to like build a lattice of farms and granaries to uh, to make up a really high food production and growth production in Ostia. Okay, so we built our first hamlet. A hamlet is kind of like a village from Civ 4. Uh, it upgrades over time and I can show you that. Uh, this particular hamlet is connected to my trade network. So if I look at it here, you can see the hamlet as a thing here. It gets plus 10 gold as a baseline, but it gets plus 10 if it's actually connected on the road to your trade network, which is all the green tiles when I have this map mode open. After 20 turns or 20 years, it will upgrade into a village and a village has a slightly better output, right? It gets an extra five gold from the trade network. It does take an extra food to use but I believe it can also then become a town later on. And the town, I think, gives you extra defense. It accounts as an urban tile. It gives you extra growth. It gives you extra gold. It does eat food. And I think if you have the guilds technology, it will actually lower the discontent in your city. It also gives a slight adjacency bonus for Odeons, which basically are uh, culture generation districts slash urban improvements. Uh, we just built the Oracle. So this wonder will give me to legitimacy and I get all the benefits of the Oracle. I get plus four culture, two victory points and a 10 gold per year per religion, as well as a free agent in all holy cities. So let's go ahead and do that. There's the Oracle now. That is the model of the Oracle. It looks fantastic in my opinion. I love how the cities look. Uh, back when I played this game originally, some of the art assets versus the city stuff wasn't fully developed, but now it looks really, really, really well developed. And I love how the little cities look. Now I could build the Ishtar Gate. It's a thing that I could do. Um, the Ishtar Gate is fantastic. Mm, 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 I could also build a lighthouse and I could build the hanging gardens. Now, if I build the hanging gardens, I would be out of resources essentially, and I would have to start chopping aggressively. Uh, let's see, Ishtar Gate or the lighthouse. Um, the Ishtar Gate would be nice because it would instantaneously boost the culture in all my cities, which is actually a really, really powerful ability. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna build the Ishtar Gate. Even if yes, it's gonna completely wipe out my economy, I think it's worth it to do. So Queen Consort has always enjoyed gardening. We could build her a garden that would cost me some money. She would become a cultivator. Well, she's not a governor. So I'll just let her be a little bit upset. So that's fine by me. Let's get the salt mine online as well. It's worth a lot of gold. Can I actually give a luxury to this city? I don't think I don't think salt actually counts as a luxury, sadly. All right, let's clear out this forest. This is a the tutorial on forests. Basically, in the early game, you won't be able to build lumber mills, so you have to use your workers to actually chop down forests. If you chop them once, they will regrow after time. If you chop them twice, that forest is completely gone and will never regrow. So in the early game, a lot of your ways of acquiring wood is just going to be running around and kind of chopping things. Um, but we are going to build a mine here because this will just be a little mine triangle, it's slightly better than just building a single mine um, or, or three mines individually. Three mines individually would get me five iron per mine. Building it like this gets me at least six iron per mine, which is like a slight improvement. It's 20% tw better to build things in a triangle, basically. All right, let's bring the slinger that is currently being uh, led by the seer forward into combat and we can start... I'm clearing out this barb camp. I'll need I'll need another um I'll need another settler in the near future. But I'm not in a massive rush to get that going. 
Owie, taking a little bit of damage off these guys. Oh, my wife has given birth to a daughter, Cornelia. And stories and souvenirs. Scouts have followed a similar route. They call themselves the Egyptians, so we've met the Egyptians. I can take a gift from them, or I can send them a gift and get some relationship with them. Or I can just have a meeting, or I can declare war. I think I'll just have a, a, a basically a civil little meeting with the Egyptians. So the Egyptians are over here to my southeast. Uh, the Persians are over here to my east. Looks like the Carthaginians are to my south, as are the... Um, I don't know who these are. The Babylonians as well are to my south. And it looks like nobody is to my north. Which is interesting. So lethal affliction. Some weeks ago our scouts ate food offered to them by the Carthaginian travellers. Shortly afterwards we began to suffer from a series of seemingly unrelated illnesses and have decided to come to lethal affliction. The food was laced with poison. So uh, we will not this little incident prey on our fears so we will get some unrest in our capital city but our leader would become a better warrior, more disciplined warrior which would mean more money for me. I could send a message to Carthage which would upset them but give us extra law, extra uh, civics, or we can immediately declare war for legitimacy. I don't really want to go to war right now. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to take discipline here because now I have pretty good discipline of 48 gold per turn from that. And uh, this guy will actually promote pretty soon. In fact, I will, my 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 leader, Ra Ramus here, or uh, Romulus rather, will actually promote after this attack. So promote King Romulus the Intrepid. So he is a general of a warrior. I can give him Horsebane. Right now, unit already has this promotion. Steadfast, interesting. So he could become Steadfast, or I could just give him even more discipline. And this would give me another 32 gold per turn and an extra five experience per year on my units. Horus Bane is interesting. I don't think I need it. I think I'm going to take the discipline here. That extra gold and the experience is like super, super powerful. Now, because he leveled up, our next level up will be harder to get, but we can level him up again. I find it, I find getting the first level can be quite easy. Getting the second level can be tough. Getting that third level is next to impossible unless your guy is just generating an insane amount of experience. Um, but I have my third warrior now, and I'll probably start sending him down over here, clear out the barbs. Although first, I will actually do um, some cleaning of the barbarians with my units. This guy is actually ready to promote. That's something to consider. I wonder, is, que is the Queen Consort actually leveling up here? She should be in theory. Yeah, she's got 75 XP. Leveling up, leveling up your, um, your court is really, really useful. Bring the Slinger down to assist. Oh, actually, you know what? I changed my mind. I think I'm going to add a General to the Slinger. Let's see, who's not leading anything yet? Faustus, the Commander, isn't leading anything. Although, maybe I would put him in charge of a Warrior. I'll move this Warrior over here. I'll add a general. Oh, he actually can't lead that. So I could have Posthumus the hero lead this unit. This is from the Fabius family. So he'd be pretty good at fighting tribes. Um, I'm going to put Canaeus. We're going to put Canaeus in charge of this. And then Faustus can be in charge of this. So um, who you can put in charge of the unit is actually dependent upon where this, the unit is built. So because I built this in a Julius city, only a Julius uh, character could lead this unit because you couldn't have like a landowner unit leading the statesman unit. Just building up my economy, I, ha I have a pretty decent early game military. I'm similar or stronger than most of the AIs and Rome is a very militaristic kind of, kind of save so I feel like focusing on that early game is the right kind of move. All right, there's even more Scythians up here to the north so the Danes will be a very interesting per people to declare war on. Um, I don't have the money to continue to develop my capital city. I could do a festival here which would give me growth and lower my unrest. I could do a council as well for a couple of turns just to generate extra cash. I could also build a treasury for extra gold income but I reckon it's time to start using some of my citizens to um, maybe get a little bit more um, resources here. And I reckon this is probably my most powerful one. Plus one culture, 10 gold for three years worth of civics expenditure. I think it's the right move. Let's get a minor. Ah, Prince Titus, my heir, is now old enough to be tutored by my courtiers. So let's go ahead and get that started. I'll uh, hide this event for now. We'll go to our family. Prince Titus is my heir. And tutoring is actually a pretty important thing to do because it will actually upgrade their stats quite a bit. Um, you can typically tutor people two times before they um, come of age. And I think I'm going to tutor. I think I'm going to use the seer to tutor, tutor my child. So I'll come over here to the slinger and I will release this general because this is the one with the seer. So I'll release the general and then I will tutor the seer. I'll use the seer to tutor my child. This will cost me 200 gold or two orders, but I think it's worthwhile to do because it basically gives him plus one stats. And if you do it twice, that's plus two stats, which is like getting two level ups basically. 
Um, so it's a really, really valuable thing to do for your children, especially because he's my heir and I'm actually going to be playing him. Can I add a general to this unit? No, it looks like I've taken up all the Julii generals. So if I'm going to build a military unit, it's going to want to be in the Claudius family here because that would give me access to more generals. But for now, I will level up my wife here by attacking with uh, the unit that she is kind of in charge of. Uh, you have a general, so I will bring you forward to do some damage. Oh, I kind of messed up my orders there. Let me rewind. There you are. So I'm going to bring you forward, attack there, and then kill with you. There is the ambition kill five military units. So we get plus 10 legitimacy there, which is basically like plus one order per turn. Uh, let's see. The stillness of the land breaks in the charging footfalls of the Roman army with eyes bright. So we've finished our ambition. So we can carry this momentum forward and keep killing units. Uh, we can sort of switch directions and go for a more promotion based things uh we can control two elder officers which involves building barracks and then training specialists or i can follow my own path and get some extra legitimacy i kind of like the idea of maybe killing even more units so let's keep the momentum forward this is rome is a very militaristic kind of kind of culture or empire or whatever so we have a friendly meeting with the babylonians I will just have a normal civil meeting with them i don't have the resources to spare with gifts ooh so Prince Titus is taking after his mother. So he will either become uncouth, which is a culture penalty um, and has some, you know, things like that. Or he'll become righteous, which is a good-ish trait, I believe. Or bold, which is also a good trait. Let's see, what does he become? He became righteous. So righteous gives us a slight um, reduction in discontent which is basically the game's version of unhappiness and he has it as a maximum strength which is really really powerful so if i make him a governor he'll even do more and um, but he will not like debauched characters so very cool prince titus is now an honorable young boy being tutored by a strange seer lady all right we have discovered the indian ocean very cool extra legitimacy and we found a tribal village slash ruin uh plus 60 culture in my capital i don't think the 60 culture in my capital matters here uh let's see 80 science, that's two turns worth of science. Legitimacy can be hard to come by, and it is a really, really powerful long-term effect. 60 culture is nice, but I don't think I'm anywhere near a culture event in Rome. Yeah, I need like, it's like 10 turns worth of culture in my capital, which is cool. I think I just take the legitimacy here because in the long run, that'll be very powerful. Keep exploring this coastline. Ooh, possibly more cities. Scythians are up here to the north. I'm gonna have to go to war with the Scythians at some point. There's just too many of their cities around. It's gonna have to happen. Do I have a military unit that needs orders? Oh, yes, cancel your order because the military unit is actually slightly more important. Move you down here. I wanna clear this out. There's a couple of Babylonian slingers coming, so I'm gonna to wanna to take control of this very, very quickly. Let's see what they do. Yeah, it looks like they're coming to clear out this barb camp, so I need to make that a priority of mine. You come here, attack him. I'll use my slinger to take over this camp. And then I'll bring this warrior down to get ready to take out that camp there. And so we have another city site, which means this settler has a place to go. We have another city site here, so I'll need an even another settler. Where were the barbs? There were some barbs over here to the east. So let's have you pop back up here. Well, actually, I have a lot of I have a lot of workers with free orders here. Okay, settler. You'll go for a farmer next. Yeah, we'll go to the farmer next. So we can start building quarries in here and start building up our stone income. Otherwise, you'll continue to make farms to sort of pay for my units. All right, nice job. We've got our three mines. I want to put my hamlet. Probably just pop a hamlet right here. Start increasing my gold income. The city already has a hamlet. Yeah, this, this is the phase of the game where orders become quite restricted. I want this warrior to come back to heal, so I will prioritize that. Uh, dinner with a rival. So, uh, let's see. <sighs> God of War. So they're trying to basically ask me who do I think would be a good general. Uh, everyone knows General Gnaeus is unbeatable. So I'm basically comparing two generals here at a Carthaginian feast. So I can increase my opinion of Carthage at the cost of opinion with one of my own generals. And I think I would like the positive opinion here because I'm not ready to go to war. Although the legitimacy from boosting my... You know what? Screw Carthage. Screw Carthage. I prefer the legitimacy of boosting my own generals. So that's the route I took. We're about to get a salt miner. Perfect. All right, they're trying to clear out this camp, but it is my camp. I'm now known as the Strong. See here, where was that event? So be I'm known as the strong because I've achieved so many ambitions. You get a certain amount of score based on the things that you've done. So for example, I, I achieved an ambition, so I got a lot of score out of that. 
Building improvements gets you score. Uh, naming landmarks gets you score. Revealing tiles gets you score. Killing units gets you score. There's a whole bunch of stuff you get from those memes. Let's. I think my wife is ready to level up from this kill here. Yeah, perfect. So I could get her some charisma or heckler. Swift, heckler, charisma. I'll take the charisma. Extra resources are always good. You should be ready to promote, actually. I will, let's see, I could go for extra 10% crit chance. Fight, urban combat, garrison. Mm, garrison is a good defensive one. And that is your kind of goal as a slinger is to be defensive in nature. Let's have a look, what else we got? I'm gonna heal up again on this guy. You sit on the city site, good job. Tutorial influence missions gives you a chance to improve another character's opinion of your leader at the cost of a few orders. Conduct influence missions by clicking the silhouette button, the action on the panel on the left. I think that's what they're talking about. Uh, maybe not. Ah, yeah, this button right here. So I can influence this guy. He's Mago of Nora. I don't know who he is or why. Um, luxuries are special resources. So they want me to send salt to Claudius, which is one of my families, which would give me a bonus relationship boost with them. So I, I think I can send luxuries to different families and cities so if i come in here i can send salt to, to rome specifically but i believe i can also i can actually send salt to particular families which is kind of interesting um let's see i can get a free influence mission on mago of nora i don't know who he is who is this guy who are you oh he's a, he's a i think he's the carthaginian leader there is a way to check this i think he is the heir of carthage I don't know who he is. You know what? Let's just, let's just do it for free. So I'm going to send Salt to the Claudius family. Uh, I will educate my heir. Let's see, do I want him to be a student of philosophy, which is more science-based? My main character is kind of a balanced character right now. Let's see, rhetoric, courage, or commerce. I feel like philosophy is a really, really powerful one in the early game, because like tactician, zealot, judge, builder, and scholar are all super powerful. If I study tactics, he could be a good military leader, which would allow me to level them up a lot. Hmm, yeah, let's let's make him a tactical leader. Let's let's go more warlike with Rome. Do a bit of harvesting with some of these builders. I could actually buy tiles because this is a landowner city, which is interesting. I'm kind of tempted to get a settler in here. It would take 11 years to build. Surely I can speed that up somehow, probably by building these fish, which means I might be better off getting a worker and chopping him out or something. Well, I absolutely just need another settler. And while that might not be the right city to build it, it is a city in which I can build it. Sometimes the, that's the best you could hope for. Well, let's see here. So ancient barbarians, uh, the style is reminiscent of the Danes. So I can choose not to upset the Danes, which will now get me an extra 48 gold and an extra six XP. So that the more stats you have on a particular thing, the more powerful it gets. You can see like the first point of discipline is like eight gold per turn. Then the second point is 16 gold. The third point is like 32 gold. And now I'm getting up to my fifth point where I'm making like 48 gold per turn from this point alone. I could pick up a ton of stone here and a bit of science and upset the Danes. But I like the idea of picking up even more gold and more unit XP on um, Romulus here. Because god damn, like five discipline is absurd. I'm making it like Rom Romulus alone is making me 128 gold per turn. That's like, that, that hopefully that gives you an idea of how important your, your leader characters are in the game. Which is something that's really cool, because it makes each leader feel very impactful. And like, if you get a really, really good leader with lots of stats, it, it just makes the game more fun. All right, cool. So Egypt has declared war on Babylon, and the tutor mission I sent on our son has had an event. Uh, come into possession of a lion, so we can... Make our child become more wise but cowardly, or more courageous but foolish. Hmm. I don't like, I don't like cowardly. Um, I think there's a lot of negative events with cowardly and foolish. In fact, both of these are really bad. The, 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 I would say both of these are bad outcomes, as far as I'm concerned. Um, I'm going to take the courage one here because he is a student of war. So I'll choose that. I've got the mongrel, Prink Totus Notus Lame Mongrel, begging for scraps. So I can either basically treat this dog with compassion, gain some stat boosts, or become strict, which will give me extra experience on my infantry units, or become cruel, which will lower my growth. Um, but I'll also be bloodthirsty, which means I do extra damage against damaged units. I think I'm gonna be compassionate here. Extra heart and discipline is quite good. Get this worker down here. I'm gonna build these nets, because that will give me plus two growth per year, which is the resource used to build settlers, which means I will get my settlers in the city slightly faster and then grow future you know, citizens to be able to actually use as specialists slightly faster as well. I right, got a bunch of idle military units. You've done your job here. Let's retreat you to heal. You'll sit on there. You're sitting on that one. You are getting ready to head over towards these guys. You should be able to clear this on your own. I will promote you. 10% bonus against infantry. 
Yeah, seems good. Found another barb camp up here way north. Uh, we found that ancient city, so we could raise the ancient city for extra stone, or we could increase the wisdom of my leader. I like I like stat boosts. I don't know, stat boosts are really fun to me. Or we can spend some food to gain two stat points from having a strength. Two stat points is really, really powerful, actually, at the cost of 80 food. That seems really, really powerful, so I'll take that. Like, look at this guy's stats now. Like, he is becoming crazy. A, a normal character would have, like, eight stats. And that's like, a, that's a strong character. This guy has like 12. What is it, like 13 stat points? That's crazy strong. And that's part of the fun for me. That's that's the way I like to play. I like to have my leader be really, really powerful, which is kind of why I like to play on the semesters game mode, which basically doubles the length of the game um, in terms of how long people are alive for. Uh, I've exerted influence upon Mago of Nora, but I lost some legitimacy, but he now has a higher opinion of me. So that is quite good. Uh, let's see, we could go for forestry, composite bow. We could pick up archers, lumber mills. We could be able to automate our scouts. We could pick up biremes, colonies, surf them. These are laws. We could pick up the forum, epics, exploration divination it wouldn't be bad to pick up forestry and um, but chopping can get us by for a very very long time i like rhetoric let's have a look at our tech tree i know i want to get to sovereignty so i think it's either rhetoric or divination here and divination gives me access to well actually while it does give me access to my shrines i don't think i'm ready for shrines i think i should go for rhetoric here because that will give me access to some more laws I think we build a granary in here now. Yeah, the granary will give me plus three food on all adjacent farms to it, as well as plus one growth per year. And extra growth in here means I'll be able to build settlers faster, as well as uh, workers, scouts, and militia. Militia are basically like sort of inexpensive defensive units. They're, they, what the, the name is what they are. They're, they're cheap militia units. They're not very strong. They don't level up, but they can defend a city in a pinch. All right, let's see, promote this unit. You've probably already promoted enough. We're up to 70 out of 200 XP. I might have a hard time leveling up this guy again. Do a little bit of healing. Heal there. Perfect. I own that city site. There's the Vandals to my south. Disputing teachers. Queen Consort has been caught in a fight with Titus's tutors. So we can go experimental, which would either make my son insane or intelligent. Insane is really, really bad. I don't want insane. So I'm going to just give him extra tutoring. Um, plus one wisdom is totally fine. Boosh. And speaking of which, I should probably tutor my son again before he comes of age. So I've got to use the seer. Cost me 200 gold and two orders to get plus one stat point on my son, essentially. Although I did get a particularly bad roll. Um, so you can see here, he's going to be coming out the gate now with a really, really good spread of stats. He's coming out. He, he basically hasn't even come of age and he's got six stat points and he's being tutored and he has zero level ups or events related to him. So he's, he's really, really powerful right now. I got a worker in Theranda. I think usually the first thing I like to do is to get the um, get the resources online. So you have marble, gold, horses, or I think I'll go for the marble first because stone is the thing that I lack the most. And this is worth two civics and 10 stone per year. That's really, really powerful. Now, Theranda itself, while I would like to be getting more like settlers and stuff like that, maybe more slingers, um, it's probably a good idea for me to get another worker in anticipation of these new cities that I'm settling. I'll be able to uh, continue to develop them. Very nice, you built a village in here, so that's even more income. I am having a little bit of a farm problem. Now I believe pastures give farm adjacency, so I think it might not be a terrible idea to put some farms next to what potentially would be a pasture. It's just a way to get a little bit of extra value out of my terrain and stuff. My nephew who is fourth in line of the throne is old enough to be tutored. It may not be worth it to tutor him because he may not actually asc ascend to the throne yet. So I could send 100 wood to Babylon to get a favor or I could send 120 training to Persia and get them to owe me a favor. Or I could just gain experience from not helping either. Persia feels pretty good about me, like pretty neutral. So I'm going to send them a... Um, Send them a little boost here to keep them neutral. Keep them from declaring war on me while I try to build up my stuff. Oh, here's really, really powerful. So one of my generals has actually come into a vast tract of family land and I can pick up 100 wood or uh, 200 gold. Now I can say to him, uh, because he plans to make it a gift to my capital city, I can say plus four border tiles in Roma or I can pick up 100 wood and 200 gold. And I really, really do feel like the 100 wood and 200 gold here actually gives me a lot of flexibility with my economy. This gets clearing out this barb camp. We actually stunned him with our attack. That's incredible. Oh, so Carthage has extended their reach quite far in this direction. And they're in fact getting ready to settle here. All right. So Egypt has started building the pyramids. My brother is uh, ill and my wife is ill. So this is where some of the 
characters are going to start dying as they get older. Their constitution gets weaker. And, uh, you know, things are going to start going bad. Right, let's get shrines. So I could pay for my son's new amulet. And he would become endeared to me, which means he would love me. Or I can tell him to keep looking for it. So he'd lose some courage, but gain some discipline. Or, ooh, I could tell him he could get by, which would give him courage. And uh, he would become courageous, but he would get cursed. I don't like the idea of being cursed. I don't mind if he loses the courage and gains the discipline. But I think uh, this is like neutral. This is neutral. This is fine. I have tons of money. I can spend money to pay for a new one. It'll improve his relationship with me. He's less likely to murder me. Um, oh, cool. So my nephew, fourth in line, has taken after his father, Duke Ramus. So he's going to become greedy or corrupt. Nice. I have a greedy or corrupt person in my family tree who may try to kill me. Ah, so it's time to choose a law. Now, I believe I have the ambition to enact slavery. So I will take slavery here. Plus, those five orders are going to come in super helpful here. Even if it does make my own happiness uh, sort of go a little bit crazy here. And we are now known as the noble. So enacting slavery... I believe uh, gave me a little bit of legitimacy and we're now known as the noble which I think is yeah just like a serious amount of score like we've made 35,000 score which is crazy. Persia and Babylon are asking me to mediate a contract dispute so I could gain relationship with one or lose relation with the other. I think I would rather have positive relations with Persia right now although I do have pretty good yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna take the positive relationship with Persia. Uh, we've established slavery Let's see so we can have an ambition to enact divine rule, which will give us legitimacy. Divine rule is sort of basically the, uh, you know, monarchy, essentially. Um, or wait, no, it's actually more about divine. It's, it's about making your leader essentially a, a, a king, like a like a god king. Interesting. Uh, so we could have an ambition to control six pastures, camps, groves or nets. We could build the hanging gardens, which I think I could do pretty easily here. Uh, change my mind after establishing a law. Ooh. So I lose legitimacy, but I get to switch the law, which is interesting. I like the idea of going like the God King route with Rome. So I'm going to say let's enact divine rule. Now, the real question is, where is divine rule? So it's down here in legal code. The problem is that the Julius people would rather I had legal code. So I guess I didn't understand the consequences of that decision. So whatever. <laughs> Persia has declared war on the Danes, so they're a little bit ahead of me on that one. Zoroastrianism has been found in Carthage, in the Carthaginian city of Nora. My brother is no longer sick. My wife has died. Titus has been tutored, so he has plus one courage. A bunch of bunch of events came to fruition there. Oh, wow. Egypt. Egypt is in control of this one. Okay. All right. Fair enough. So Egypt is down here as well. Looks like I kind of have this corner of the continent to myself, which I'm quite happy about. I like having... I, I like spawning sort of on the edge of the world rather than the center of it. So now we're known as the glorious Jesus. We are just cranking out stuff here. Uh, so I can take food or iron. I think I'm going to have an easier time coming across iron, so I'm going to grab food. My wife has died, so I gained some experience. Basically, <laughs> I've been alive long enough. Now, I can I can support this religion, Zoroastrianism, that has been founded in Carthage. Or I can sort of refuse to support it, which will upset that religion, but get me legitimacy. And I like legitimacy, so I'm going to do that. Uh, Prince Titus has completed his study, so he can become either a schemer, which would give him a lot more wisdom, uh, but lower his courage. Or he could become a zealot will give him a ton of courage, but lower his wisdom. Now, zealots can be acting as generals or chancellors. And as a leader, they get plus one fatigue limit. All cities can always build the state religion buildings. And in state religion cities, we can hurry production with training. Training is that red military resource. So having lots of military resources here could be useful if we opt to go to war, especially if we also go for a religion route. Hmm. I could adopt a state religion. It's hard. It's hard to know. Hard to know. I don't really like Schemer. I mean, sure, you can adopt children and you can serve as an agent of the spy master. You get tons of science. This one here, this 44 training, um, and it also makes him a good general. I think we do that. And then I don't know where military action is likely with my next military like melee unit. Possibly all the way up here, but that's a long way away. I'm going to send my nephew out into the world to learn how to uh, how to live. I don't want I don't don't want to like do his events because I'm kind of lazy. So I'll just send him out to explore the universe. Hmm. Do I build the hanging gardens? 
Yeah, let's build the Hanging Gardens. It's worth two victory points and it'll make my cities grow faster, which means I can expand easier, do all sorts of stuff better. I do have access to Axemen now, so that's something I should be considering upgrading my units. Well, the Seer has died, so I won't be able to teach people things anymore. And Duchess Cornelia, my daughter, second in line, is now old enough to be tutored. And we have, ooh, a free has status. Yes, give me that. Oh, 15 years though. Uh, my science is actually tanked here because I lost my wife and the Seer and most of my science was coming from my court. I will take that free has status, but science will be very, very slow for the, you know, the coming months. So she served as well, I get more experience. Oh, he's actually about to level up, which is cool. And it is the Silver Jubilee. So we have reigned for 25 years, two max level units. All right, interesting, 10 legitimacy for doing that. Field eight generals, maintain six governors, or just get experience. I will go for two max level units. That one seems pretty achievable. I don't know what max level is, but I'm sure I can make my way there by, you know, leveling up one of these guys. So they want a melee and range unit. So I'll, I'll work on this melee unit first. There's another level on you. Oh, he's going to be 400 to upgrade. So I don't know what max level is, but I will try to reach it. Time to settle this city right here. And let's see what kind of city. If we look at the resources here, uh, we've got lots of marble, lots of ore. So it might not be a bad landowner city because there's a lot of like rural things that we can take advantage of. Yeah, let's do a landowner city here. So Boosh, we got another landowner city. We don't need this slinger to garrison this anymore. My heir has come of age. I can give him discipline by running a normal event. I will give him discipline because I, I will be playing as him. Okay, so the Vandals want to marry off one of their people to my son. Now the Vandals, I believe, where the hell do they even exist? I, I may take this marriage offer depending on what her skill is. Three courage, not good enough. I'm going to skip that one. All right, so my nephew has actually sent home word. He has gone off to India and explored there and he's found all sorts of cool things. So I could send him home and he'll bring back some stuff or I can keep him out there to try to find a way to bring back that gold, which will level both him and me up, though he will become bitter. Or I can just pick up a little bit of wisdom from saying, let's analyze the reports. I think I'll pick up the wisdom here. A couple of extra points of science here would make up for the fact that my wife and the seer uh, lady that I had died. Oh, we have found the Numidians. I could do a truce or I could declare war. I think I'll maintain the truce. I like to sort of take a peaceful exploratory view of things in the early game and then slowly transition to war rather than just being like, rah, 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 battle, 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 right from the gate. Axemen are an option, not a bad option either if I think about it. I am now known as Romulus the Magnificent. I have made 45,000 fame and goddamn are we powerful. 90 legitimacy. This is the most legitimacy I've had in the early game pretty much ever. Uh, Queen Dido is dead. Carthage is at peace with the Scythians and the Ishtar Gate has been built by Rome. So that was me. I built that. Oh, I'm no longer mourning. Cool. Ooh, tons of events here. Persia has come in a diplomatic offer so we can get a peace treaty with Persia. Right now, I believe we're at what is basically a truce. Peace is slightly different. Peace means we cannot attack each other. We're less likely to declare war to each other and we can enter and heal in each other's territory. So that might be a good move for me diplomatically. Um, I like the idea of being at peace with Persia. They are my closest neighbor. So I think we've had a culture event in Ostia. Um, we could gain Mystophoria in here, which would give us a boost of law and culture and a negative of gold or mandatory jury service which would give me the judge. So I would change roles. I don't think I like judge or I can just get a bunch of orders and experience. I think I will establish Mystophoria. Um, it does hurt me in the money sense, but culture and civics are quite powerful. Sporting chances. So this is another culture event. Oh, I think that's because I built the, um, the wonder that gives me a hundred culture in every city, which will trigger the first culture event in every city. Uh, so Thorenda Center culture. Cool. Um, so we can let the elders have athletic tradition archery in Thoranda, which means all archers we train in here would be better. Or wrestling, which would give infantry units experience. Or horse racing, which would give equestrian units experience. I think this city, you know what? Let, let's go with equestrian. Let's have better horse units in here. We've hit a golden age in another city. So we're gonna get a ton of culture events this turn because we built the uh, that wonder. So in Ponus Alias, um, we can get culture, we can get civics, we can get gold or we can lower our unhappiness. Um, hmm. 40 culture isn't, isn't really a lot. It's like 10% of the next one. Gold isn't like super great. Negative unhappiness is nice. Yeah, let's just, let's just wipe out a bit of discontent. The negative discontent is hard to come by in the early game. Ah, okay, so we've got volunteers. So we could gain a free worker in here or a free Axeman. The Axeman is really, really powerful, but I think the free worker 
Is this better for my economy long term? We built the Ishtar Gate. Perfect. We get four legitimacy for building a wonder. We have two wonders now. Um, the Oracle and the Ishtar Gate. And we're also working on, uh, oh God, what is this again? The water one. The Hanging Gardens. That one. Matchmaker, you want to see where you're working the world? Well, type this. Seek a suitable partner. So I could take a Danish leader or a Julius family. Um, I think I'll take the one, whichever one gives me the most science. So I'll probably go for an Egyptian wife here. Yeah, so I'll take Hetefere's the minister. Upgrade Romulus. I am the leader of a warrior. So I got a level up here. I could take another point of courage. I think I might take another point of wisdom here for that little bit of extra science before this guy dies. He is 48 years old, so he's likely to die fairly soon. He is leveling this unit up quite quickly. Um, I'm gonna spend, I'm gonna spend the, uh, let's see, plus damage against damaged. Yeah, it's become bloodthirsty. So he hit max level. So that is a level five, a level five warrior here. And I need to do the same thing with a slinger. Let's see which slinger. Well, here's a slinger that has good levels, I think. Engineer, urban, garrison is good. What do you do again? You give six experience per year, so you basically make it cheaper to upgrade this. Yeah, I think I can work on this max level thing, and this this slinger here will be the unit that I do it with. Shrine of Vesta. We can build, start building religious buildings, but I am going to prioritize again just um, getting these things online, like quarries and stuff. I think it's about time I build some barracks in my capital city. Um, I feel like I'm missing out on that extra training. So we'll cut the trees, we'll clear the land, and... I'd like to build a barracks. I'd have to spend a bit of cash on it. But yeah, getting these barracks in my capital, it'll be a 20% 20, 20 boost to my training in here, which means this would be a really, really good city for developing military. But also it would just give me more training um, that I can use to upgrade my units. Carthage is now at war with the Scythians. That's kind of good news for me because the Scythians are spread pretty far and wide. Carthage is down here. So my hope is the Scythians will, will do some damage to them while I try to just sneak in and get my settlers in position and then prepare for my own war with Scythia. So my nephew who I sent out exploring has sent back more words. So tales, these reports say from the barbaric Celtic and Germanic tribes. So I can bring him home. He'll bring home some resources. I'll become superstitious. Ooh, Hyboria. So they reckon he's in Hyboria. So Duke Aulus would become bold. Send an envoy to contact these giants. I will gain wisdom and could lead to future events. All right, cool. Let's do it. Send an envoy. I like this. You could send your, your people off to, to go do things in the world. Um, I'd like one daughter maybe studied in commerce to help maintain my gold economy. So as Rome, we have access to the Shrine of Mars, which gives us... Uh, two training per year and two culture per year. Gives 10 experience to idle infantry units that are stationed on the tile. Spreads Roman paganism and generally just counts as an urban tile. We also have the Shrine to Vulcan, which gives you two culture per year, plus one training per year per adjacent lumber mill and 20% production for adjacent mines. Very cool. Um, you can see here, you know, if you, if you hover over this, it'll actually show you the effects, you know, uh, adjacency and culture and all that sort of stuff. It's very, very cool. The Shrine of Venus would give me growth. 20% uh, for extra pasture, for adjacent pastures. And it would spread Roman paganism. It's an urban improvement. And then finally, we have the Shrine of Vesta, which is just a really, really strong uh, urban improvement that has bonuses for being adjacent to resources. I actually like the Shrine of Vesta most here. So I think I'm going to pop down a Shrine of Vesta right here in my capital. Although, again, I'm having a little bit of a, a, little bit of a gold problem. <laughs> I don't have enough money uh, to continuously do this. So I'll, I'll have to find more, more stone from somewhere. And it's probably going to be from building along these mountains and then upgrading those tiles with uh, stone cutters and farmers and stuff. So we just got a farmer in Ostia. And one of the best ways to get science in this game is to actually build the specialist slots. Each one is worth one science. And so I think getting them online early is, is pretty powerful. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to keep working on building those up. I'm going to try to influence um, Babylon so I can get a peace treaty with them so I can explore through their land. Oh, my wife has become greedy. That's a little bit unfortunate. Not the end of the world. Most important thing is she's providing me with a bit of science here. So my daughter uh, has gained some experience. Very nice. Well done, daughter. And a marriage offer for my son. So Dido of Utica, she's quite wise. Or I could take Han, Han B the hero, who is quite courageous. I think it would be good to have a wise wife to help 
make up for the technology gap when I go to the next generation because my current leader is giving me like 16 science which is almost like a third of my current science yeah so when he bites the bullet I'm gonna be a little bit constrained so Pontus I did a festival in Pontus to try to get a little bit more culture um but also it just kind of lowers the dissatisfaction in the city the danger is though that as the city's population continues to increase it will start using up more gold and food so I need to be like a little bit ready for that kind of thing I think the big thing is just to continue to get workers more and more development. Ooh, and this is a specialist here. I could build a trapper. Gives me more food, spreads my borders. Science, yeah. Let's get some trappers going. Let's try to get some specialists. They actually help out a lot. All right, reports of a raid from a vandal outpost near Kaleva Ara Atrabatum. So I need to be worried about that. I've influenced the Queen of Babylon. So now, let me see here. Would you do a national peace? Requires minimum pleased. So I've already sent them an influence. Maybe I could send them a gift. Send them a gift of iron or food. I'll send them a gift of iron. Now peace. Hmm. Peace event. Requires ambassador. I don't have the ambassador. So hopefully we'll get a peace event. Let's see, so I have a settler who can go over here. I have a settler here. I need, I need so many more settlers. Oh my goodness. But yeah, I think, I think I quickly expand my, my guys in here so I can capture more of these water things. But yeah, I think that's going to be it for this episode. I love you all very much. Hope you guys are enjoying this series. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.